It's Chrissy Lulu. Welcome to another Art Supply Sunday. Today, I got a special surprise for you. No, no, no. It's not those just yet. It's one of my favorite things. Paper. <laughs> so there's tons and tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of different kinds of paper. Now, what you prefer to use is definitely all going to be up to you, and it's really very person to person so um, choosing your paper is actually one of the most important like steps in making artwork so here I have a couple of different kind of examples of paper these two right here are just some bright um, papers they're cardstocks oh I didn't notice that and I also got some cardstock here that's about the same size except these are Easter colors I guessed I got them I got them on clearance for Easter but yeah these are all cardstocks they're a, I'm pretty sure they're a thicker kind of paper I've never actually used cardstock but I like the colors of them and I love colored paper that is something I've been introduced to recently and I absolutely love the effects you get Honestly, just using a different color paper really can change your artwork so much and how much your thing just your drawing pops off the paper and everything. Um, another kind I have here today is my beat up Bristol board sketchbook. Now this is one of my favorite actually for doing Copic drawings. So you can see I'm actually kind of low on paper in here. should probably pick up another one. And I tested a bunch of colors up here. But yeah, crystal and watercolor. Oh, I still need to finish these. I will, I promise guys, I'll do a video for these. I want to fix up that. That's ugly. That, that looks okay though. So do those, I guess. I, I guess they're okay. But yeah, I, I thought I had more. I guess not. Um, but yes, what's the difference between these? Why do you need different papers? Well, the important thing to look at when you are choosing your paper is, number one, the pounds, or the grams, depending on where you're from. If you're from Europe, I'd say look at grams and everything. You should look at dimensions. Um, of course, um, most, of, most of them are probably going to be 9 by 12, or in case of these, 8.5 by 11. They could be smaller. I don't... Oh, there's one here. We got this one, and we got this one. Just some other examples. This is this is the paper that I did my um, ink drawings for Inktober on. As you can see, there's my bebes. But yeah, so this is kind of like not super thick. It's sketchbook paper. Um, did I? I don't think I've actually done any. No, I haven't. Um. But um, this paper is actually not awful with water retention. This is just watered down ink right here. So I'd say if you were really careful, you could probably use watercolors on this paper. But yep, um, here's the stuff. This is sketchbook paper. It's cheap. It's thin. It lets stuff bleed through it. I'm pretty sure. I mean, I could do a great example of this. I've been shoving random things in here if you can't already tell. Oh, careful, careful. I draw, I draw, I draw um, life poses in here sometimes. So I, I'm so sorry if you see any boobies. Um, it'll happen. Yeah, yeah, it does not take markers. You can see it right here. Got all these gross markers. And this is the thing I was reading. Actually, there's a little tidbit in that one video of Estelle's background. Yeah, fun fact, yeah. So these, this, these, this is just cheap sketchbook paper. I don't know how this one holds up with markers. Actually, I've never tried it. But yeah, um, I don't know what. So in the corner of sketchbooks, you often get this little number here that says blah 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 grams and I believe that that is how much a hundred 
sheets of that paper weighs. So it can just tell you how thick a piece of paper is, pretty much. Yeah. Anywho, let's get right into the drawing. So, for today, I ended up using my colored papers because I really like them. I kept them wrapped just just for when I did this video, and I wanted to use the papers, so I had to do this video and unwrap them and use them. Um, I really did have a lot of fun with the paper, but yeah, I'll talk about it more at the end. I'm speeding through me opening up the paper, so bye! Talk to you in a bit.
finished product. So yeah, as you can see, I didn't cover all the paper because I didn't feel like it. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the results. I actually really enjoyed working on this paper and I definitely do want to do more, especially since I had like three sheaths of paper and I have a lot of it. I should probably use it. Right? I love paper. It's one of my favorite things to buy. I think it's probably a lot of our favorite things to buy, seeing as how seeing seeing how many people just stock up on sketchbooks and everything. But yeah, um I would love in the future if I can go more into depth with different kinds of paper, like more in depth with watercolor paper in general and talk about the differences between them and stuff like that and definitely I would love to do one just on Bristol board because you've got I mean this this paper is amazing for showing it you've got the smooth Bristol and you also have the more rough Bristol I personally prefer the smooth Bristols but that's just my preference but um as you can see I actually used my Prismacolors on this one which was all right and <laughs> I'm kind of second guessing my love for them. Um, I can do a video on that later, but um, yeah, for now, we will save that for another day. But yeah, the one thing I do really like is how it does cover the paper. Um, I really do like how the characters kind of stand out from the paper just because I left most of it that green in the or the colored part. And it's more interesting than just having white, I think. Instead of just having white paper as your empty space, having a color there is a lot more interesting, I think. And you can really change moods just by the color in the background, and it can save you work if you do a lot of building up of color. I love colored paper. <laughs> um, um, I definitely actually want to show you at some point my mid-tone papers. I have some grays and I have some tans that work nice because you can just with those you can just leave it leave like skin you can just leave that the color of the paper and saves you lots of time when you're coloring. So that's also a little cheat if <laughs> you ever don't want to waste all your pencils or you're like dang like, I know my peach in my EC Moore premiere, I, I don't even know, the, the color pencils I got from EC Moore, my peach is like that big. It's not as, I actually killed one of my pencils the other day doing a project for school, <laughs> but yeah, um, it can save your pencils, your markers and everything because everyone has skin and if you like certain skin tones you use them a lot but yeah I'm blabbing at this point um, I hope you enjoyed this video I hope you enjoyed seeing me create something with paper I don't see a lot of people here on YouTube using colored paper and I think it's such a shame I really would love if more people out there would take advantage of these papers and use them oh and yeah this is a picture of Miss June and Cicero her boyfriend, but not boyfriend, her male friend, but yeah, um, yeah, I really would, <laughs> wow, that was awkward, I'm sorry, I would love more colored paper on YouTube, spread the word, hopefully, hopefully it catches on, it's, it's just, <sighs> I feel colored paper is just such an underloved thing. It's just underappreciated. Um, yeah, tune in next week for another Art Supply Sunday. I hope to be doing my marker video soon. And then go into smaller categories under that because I have tons of markers. And also colored pencils and stuff. But yeah, tune in next time. Make sure to like comment subscribe if you haven't already and share it with a friend i would love it um 
as you know, I don't have a lot of subscribers at the moment. I'm a very small channel, so any help would really, like, do me wonders. Um, so yeah, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye!